He's universally recognized as the king of martial arts movies after making only one Hollywood film. He died young, aged just 32, and went on to become the biggest movie star in history. And he influenced popular culture more than anyone, before or since. Bruce totally inspired me and, ma and made me dream and made me realize that I wanted to be a filmmaker. He definitely inspired me to, to, to want to do more with my life. I know that Bruce Lee is the best. Bruce Lee changed the world. It resonated not only with Asians, but it resonated with the black community, the white community. He was a hero for uh, an entire culture that had no heroes. Bruce Lee is the father of mixed martial arts. That was a huge elbow that... Bruce Lee isn't just a fighter, he's, he's a thinker, and the rules that he created in his book and the guidelines, they're transferable to anything in life. He was smart enough to create this very simple, iconic image that was endlessly reproducible. He's everywhere. We need emotional content. Don't think. Icon and skilled martial artist. Hey! Yeah! A man able to perform superhuman feats that have yet to be equal, such as a two finger push up and a lethal blow called the one inch punch. As well as a skilled martial artist. Bruce Lee was a writer, philosopher, and filmmaker. He was the first person to use his phenomenal kung fu skills on screen without the aid of special effects. Bruce Lee totally revolutionized the way uh, unarmed combat would be presented on screen. But he wouldn't live to see his global impact. He died suddenly in Hong Kong, aged just 32, having starred in only four kung fu films. His biggest film, Enter the Dragon, was released on August 19, 1973, four weeks after his death. It was an instant hit, creating a superstar whose influence would change the world forever. The secret chambers of Han's evil empire. For many people, Enter the Dragon was their first glimpse of this new Asian superstar. The movie left a profound and lasting impression, influencing and inspiring people around the world, like rapper and actor LL Cool J. From the first time I saw him on screen, you know, I just thought he was electrifying. He had a lot of charisma. He was magnetic. So fluid with his movements and so cat-like. It was just really, really exciting for me. A lot of his speaking he did through movement, through um, posture, through looks and glances. I mean, there were certain scenes where he didn't even have to say anything. LL Cool J is the first rap artist to amass 10 consecutive platinum selling albums. He's moved on to a successful acting career with more than 30 films under his belt. Bruce Lee influenced me because Bruce Lee made me want to make movies. He was a powerful human being, and you know, that inner power I think resonated. It jumped off the screen and touched you personally. It's not just actors Bruce Lee has inspired. His influence can be felt in people from all walks of life. Anybody who came into the martial arts film world, um, whether they admit it or not, Bruce Lee was a prime influence. More interesting is the way that people in other areas of popular culture, the rappers, the musicians, the filmmakers, uh, directors, cinematographers, they all have been influenced by Bruce Lee. Hollywood film director Brett Ratner cites Bruce Lee as his biggest influence. 
He's directed eight feature films, grossing over one and a half billion dollars, and is best known for the Rush Hour trilogy, starring Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. First Bruce Lee film I saw was Enter the Dragon, and I became obsessed with it. I think I've watched it more than any other movie I've ever watched in my entire life, and it just completely blew me away. He had such a unique persona, such a unique style, an individuality. But he made fighting entertaining. He made it fun. He made it dramatic. He made it emotional. Actor Eddie Griffin's first experience of Bruce Lee was watching his second film, Fist of Fury, also known as The Chinese Connection. It was released in 1973, made in Cantonese and dubbed into English. Why did you kill my teacher? When we were at the drive-in theater, uh, Kansas City, Missouri, right? It's one of those movie theaters where they have uh, two screens. There's one over here and there's one here. And uh, we, we were watching... Uh, Fist of Fury, and there's a porno playing on the other one. Tell you how good Bruce is. Nobody was watching the porno. We fight alone, or all together. It'll just take me to show you. Blown away, man. We came out of the place. Immediately, everybody started emulating Bruce. <laughs> Throwing kicks at your little brother, you know, at your big brother, you know. Wah! And uh, yeah, uh, been hooked on that dude ever since. Fellow comedian and actor Margaret Cho first saw Bruce Lee when she was eight years old, watching his films with her family. He was like a beautiful, beautiful man, but also some something that was not um, human. <laughs> I think his influence for me personally was really um, huge and watching him as a child made me see or give me, gave me the notion that I could do whatever I wanted. I don't know like how I got the idea that I could be a comedian and be in movies and be in TV, I just don't know, but I realized it was because of Bruce Lee. So I, I feel like I have an eternal debt to him that I've got to fight <laughs> somehow. Many did just that, going on to become champions in their own field. Sugar Ray Leonard is widely regarded as one of the best fighters of his generation, earning an unprecedented six world championship titles in five weight classes. I've told people all over the world that Bruce Lee was one of my idols, uh, mainly because of his, of his mental stability, because of his fighting spirit, because it was more, it was more mental than just physical. What's more interesting is to meet people whom you would not imagine, like Carlos Santana, who you would not think was a Bruce Lee fanatic. And he came to Hong Kong. The first thing he said was, "Where's the Bruce Lee Memorial? I want to go and pay respect to the spirit of Bruce Lee." So it's all pervasive, and I've encountered it again and again during my work. Athletes, actors, artists, and musicians all cite Bruce Lee as an influence. So how did a skinny kid called Lei Siu Lo rise from the back streets of Hong Kong to become the global icon known as Bruce Lee? And why, 35 years after his death, is his popularity and influence stronger than ever? Water, my friend. Bruce Lee's philosophy has sparked an unusual following across European cities. This is free running. The art of expressing yourself physically as you move across urban spaces. Free running is an offshoot of a discipline that first emerged in France, known as parkour. It took Bruce Lee's philosophy of developing instinctive movement and applied it to how a body can move across an urban space as freely and directly as possible. 
the ultimate goal with free run is to, to be fluid and, and, yeah, and, and to attain flow. Bruce Lee said that you must move like water to, to flow, to uh, adapt to any given situation. So you never stop at obstacles, you just keep moving and find a way around them. Bruce Lee has been a big influence on parkour free runners because of his philosophy. These arts also have a philosophy. It's not just simple movement. There is actually a method to it and there is like ways of intercepting the obstacles, ways of calculating, being sensitive to your environment and ultimately altering your awareness so you become more in tune to yourself and your environment. It's a philosophy that can be adapted to many disciplines and situations. Bruce Lee isn't just a fighter, he's, he's a thinker and the rules that he created in his book and the guidelines are transferable to anything in life and especially anything that involves using your body. I think a fight is one blow, one kick, until you can put combinations together without even thinking. Until you learn how to keep moving and to endure, you've got to listen. Bruce Lee's philosophy uh, is absolutely um, as fresh as when it was newly minted in like in like the 1970s. Adapt what is useful, reject what is useless, and create what is specifically your own, which you can apply to anything. I might do that as a filmmaker, you might do that as a documentary filmmaker, somebody else might do that as a musician, as a sculptor, a dancer, whatever. Everybody can adapt that philosophy to their area of expertise. Bruce Lee's introduction to philosophy started early, at 13, when he began studying Kung Fu under the guidance of the legendary master, Yip Man. He taught Bruce Lee that the martial arts involve much more than just the physical. When he came to the United States at the age of 18, Bruce Lee majored in philosophy, studying all types, Eastern, Western, Ancient and Modern, so that he could blend the physical and the philosophical in his martial art of Jeet Kune Do. He summed up his philosophy of being flexible, fluid, and not sticking to one particular style in a television interview in 1971. Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. The water can flow or it can crash. Water, my friend. The Pierre Burton interview was one of the few Bruce Lee did in English, and it allowed him to communicate his thoughts to an audience outside of Hong Kong. So in this interview, he was able to communicate all those thoughts and do it in such a way that it was not just physical, also philosophical, and a way to conduct one's life. That's why I think this interview is more meaningful than many of the others that concentrate only on Bruce's physical ability. His philosophies, his work ethic, his cultural kind of background, to interpolate that into a kind of a cinematic world where it's believable. You have an actor who really believes this way of life. You know, he was the real thing. He compares Kung Fu to water. That Kung Fu has the continuity of movement, where, you know, it, it's, it's constantly moving. Water, you cannot grab, right? And water can go through a solid, you know, it can go through a rock. It's philosophical, but at the same time, simplistic. And it can be understood by a young child or, or, or a master. Bruce Lee's philosophy, recounted in his book, The Tao of Jeet Kune Do, was apparent in some of his earliest American TV appearances, where he would include his teachings in the script. You must free your ambitious mind and learn the art of dying. He quotes from the Agakuri, the uh, Japanese way of the warrior. To learn to lose, to learn to die, is to be liberated from it. I mean, it's just amazing to think of, like, getting that kind of information, that kind of philosophy on a mainstream uh, television show. Bruce Lee changed philosophy by modernizing it and making it mainstream. He embraced the notion of self-help years before it became popular and showed that philosophy could be part of everyday life. Bruce Lee had his own philosophy and that philosophy ultimately was finding yourself, in my opinion, truthfully expressing yourself and putting on no pretense being able to be who you are is a hard thing without putting on a show so his goal was to just be 